Hello and welcome to today's webinar on farm to early care and education hosted by the Arkansas Department of Agriculture, Curricular Concepts, and the Arkansas Coalition for Obesity Prevention. We're going to start by talking about the Go Knapsack statewide program, give a tutorial of the online system, and then dig into farm to early care and education. So, welcome again. Um, like she said, I'm Amy Rout from Curricula Concepts, and we're jo Ashley um, Story is my coworker, and we are part of a statewide project right now. Um, it's called Better Together, but we also are part of the Go Knapsack team, where we are um, just introducing what's called the Go Knapsack tool. It's an online um, assessment tool that early child care providers can use for their programs. Uh, we're going to talk to you a little more about it and introduce it as well as um, show you what it looks like, some of the benefits of it. So really, I went ahead quickly there. So go knapsack. This says knapsack and it used to be just called knapsack. Is there anyone out there if you want to type in the chat box if you've heard Besides those that are part of my Better Together project right now, if you've heard of Knapsack. Knapsack's been around a while. It's actually the paper version, um, but University of North Carolina, who kind of oversees Knapsack, made it an online tool. So it's called Go Knapsack now for the online um, piece. And it is a, a, a tool, like I said, for early child care providers to um, assess the health and wellness of the program. All of your best practices, policies, procedures, all of those things um, that surround wellness. So we're going to dive into this tool just a little bit. So one of the things that um, Go Knapsack is, aims to do is set the foundation for healthy habits within your child care center. So the thing that they focus on really is the whole child. So a lot of times um, we think of, of developmental, um, of the development of a child in different pieces. You know, we know we have the cognitive development, language development, social, emotional, sensory, and health and physical. But what we know is that when we are providing best practices and um, different tools and resources for children and families to be healthy, it's actually going to support their development in all areas. So you're going to be, if, if, if you're focusing on healthy nutrition, physical activity, and just overall health inside of a child, you're supporting those other developments like cognitive. So if they um, are, have eaten nutritiously and they've had exercise, they're able to think better and process information better and, um, and their memory is going to be better. Also, all of the things that we do when we provide these activities are going to is, is going to support the language development because just think, for instance, if you're sitting down at a table eating with a child, um, you are going to be talking to them and you're talking about whether it's just random things about the day or you're talking about the food that they're eating and using those opportunities to provide language rich experiences. Um, so really go knapsack is supporting that whole child development and that's the lens that they're looking at um, at all of this through so let's talk about it so the purpose of it is to support improvements to child care environments that will foster healthy eating physical activity and just the overall development so something to know about go knapsack is that it was developed by researchers in public health professions and child care professions. So where a lot of times you go, oh, just some doctors created this program and they know nothing about child care. Well, they brought child care professionals into this so that it's um, a, a better approach and that everybody benefits from it. And so it's not just from one viewpoint. It has definitely been proven effective in making healthy changes. Like I said, we're part of a project right now called Better Together, and it is a two-year project where we are implementing 
a real um, inclusive project of the SCONAP staff within about 75 programs around the state. And um, we have a lot of great testimonials and a lot of people seeing the changes that it makes within their program just around their policies and practices. Um, it's widely used. It's trusted in more than 20 states. Um, and it's also free to use for the most part. So right now for two years, it is free in Arkansas. Um, it's never at the cost of the provider. It's usually a statewide um, funded project. So we are currently working to make sure that it goes beyond those two years so that it continues to be free. So a little bit about the components of GoNapsack. Um, they, they look at it in a couple of different ways. So first of all, they have an improvement process. That that's what they base it off of. Then they have all of the modules and um, it all comes to the best practices that support those modules. So let me go back to that. So first of all, the improvement process, if you look at that, the first thing that we always have to do when we're trying to make changes is assess what's currently happening. So there's an assessment piece. And if you look in the middle of that circle, you're gonna see all of the areas within GoNapsack. So there's breastfeeding and infant feeding, there's a section on farm to ECE, which is why y'all are here today. Um, there's a section on oral health, infant and child physical activity, outdoor play and learning screen time and child nutrition. And each of those areas has an assessment piece that you would use in your program um, to assess your what you're currently doing. Then you, after you've assessed, you're able to look at those areas where you're strong and you're doing well. And then you'll look at some areas where maybe you have some room to grow. And so you make a plan, you choose some of those areas where you have room to go, to grow, and you make a plan and take action. So you set up these action plans where you're working on goals to reach those best practices. Um, then there's a whole library within GoNapsack that Ashley's going to show you where you can learn more. It has tips and materials and resources. And then we continue the cycle. Once we've completed some of our goals, we reassess and it keeps going that way. So it's a really, it's the, the process of it is laid out so nicely within GoNapsack. Um, so for instance, some of the questions on the assessment, like for child nutrition, um, the areas, so there's different sections in each module. So the best practice se sections of child nutrition, foods and beverages provided, feeding environment, feeding practices, menus and variety, education and professional development, and policy. And what we know is that number six, we want to always work towards making sure we have policies within our programs to support all of these best practices. So an example of the food and beverage um, provided question would be fruit, not juice is offered two times per day or more. So that is um, that you will answer that question and according to your answers is how you come out and they will show you, are you me meeting be best practices or not? And so this is the best practice that you want fruit, not juice offered two times today per day or more. So it just goes through and asks in each area a question that has to do with best practice and you answer where you are. This is our physical activity best practice sections um, and here are some examples of those um, questions. So that's part of the assessment. And then again, you assess, plan, take action, learn, and keep it up. You just keep going in that improvement process. So Ashley is going to actually take you into the GoNapsack tool and let you look at it. I wanted her to have more time than me because <laughs> it helps to be able to actually look at the tool. So Ashley, I'll let you take it. Okay, great. Um, well, I'm excited that you're all here to join us today, and I'm super excited to share this Go Knapsack tool. Um, this is going to be a very brief overview, so just know that if you decide that you want to go ahead and get started with this self-assessment tool, um, you'll get some TA and some one-on-one -on -one time, and we can go a little bit deeper into exactly step-by-step -step how to do everything. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, can we see it? 
Good to go. Okay. All right. So first things first, you think that you want to use the GoNapsack self-assessment tool and you're wondering how to get started. Um, do not just go to GoNapsack and click join today. Uh, you need a registration code from us, the TAs of Arkansas. So we will send you a registration code if you will let us know what program you're with and your email address, and then you will get a specialized code sent to you. You'll follow the link in your email and then go knapsack is going to ask you some specific questions about your program and you'll want to take some care in answering those questions just for the simple fact that your self assessment tool is going to be customized to your program. So, for example, if you don't serve infants, they're not going to ask you questions about serving infants. Okay. Now, once you get your account set up uh, and you log in, this is the page that you're going to land on. <clears throat> And you're going to see that on the far left side, we have this green navigation bar. And this is basically going to take you through that five step improvement process that Amy was talking about. Um, but this My Knapsack tab is going to give you a brief overview of your progress within all of the seven different content areas. Um, so you see child nutrition, breastfeeding and infant feeding, farm to ECE oral health, infant and child physical activity, outdoor play and learning and screen time. And it'll show you these bars right here just means that I've taken a self-assessment in those two areas. If you scroll down, these tabs are gonna again, take you through those different content areas and they're gonna show you where you, where you are in the five-step improvement process on each one. So step one, assess. We'll do one that I've actually got some stuff on. Uh, step one is assess. You can see that I've taken an assessment and I can view those results. Step two is to plan. So these are my action plans. And then it takes you through step three, four, and five. All right. So step one is to take that self-assessment. So we will go into the self-assessment navigation bar on the left. Um, and then we will choose which content area we want to get started in. And since you're here today, it's probably farm to ECE. And so that's very exciting. Um, so you will take your first self-assessment. You would go click on farm to ECE and click start self-assessment. Um, for the sake of time today, we're not going to go through the entire self-assessment, but I will go ahead and show you that um, just a couple of key points. So when you're answering these questions, it's going to save it as you go along because we all understand that you're child care providers and things get crazy sometimes. So each page is going to auto save as you go through it. Um, specific words are underlined like local foods. It's going to give you a, a deeper like meaning or a deeper definition of what what go knapsack is referring to so it shows you here that local foods is underlined um, and it says for go knapsack local foods may be grown in your state or if you're close to a border a neighboring state and it goes on through there so you'll just go through and just click your qu answers to your questions um, and then you're going to click continue now i will show you guys what a finished self-assessment looks like so let's do infant and child physical activity so once you've completed your self-assessment, um, it's gonna bring you to this page right here. At the top, you're gonna see the overall results bar. So it's gonna show you where your program lands on the overall results bar. And then if you scroll down, it's gonna be your detailed results section. So it's gonna take you through those different sections that Amy was talking about earlier. Um, and it's gonna show you how you can improve in each area. So you would just click on these different icons and you're gonna see the best practices that you are meeting. And then if you click over here, you'll see the best practices that your program is not meeting. One of my favorite parts about this is the fact that it shows you the item here. It shows you what your response was, and then it shows you what the best practices right next to it. So it makes it a very tangible thing to reach those goals. Um, all right, so that was step one to take your self-assessment. Step two is to plan. So we are going to go into the action planning tab. Um, and then based off of your results, based off those best practices that you're not meeting, you're going to identify some goals that you want to work on. So you would just go in here and click select goals and you're going to choose which areas you want to focus on. And then you would then identify which goals in these areas you want and you would click select goal and it's going to throw it down to the bottom of your screen. Um, so that's very simple. You do that part once you have chosen your goals, um, you will go in, hold on, you will develop your action plans for those goals. And we're not going to do that together today because it can get a little bit muddy. Um, but I wanted to show you what a finished action plan looks like. 
Um, so what's so fantastic about Go Knapsack is that once you've selected those goals and thrown them to the bottom, you're just going to click a button that says start an action plan and it's going to give you this draft action plan. So you could literally keep this word for word. Um, and this is going to help you reach your goals. So that's just amazing. What I like about it as well is the fact that you can edit this plan and you can go in here and you can type in the support staff that you want to work on that. You could edit these steps to make it more customizable just to your program. Um, so you can do all of that and then you can print it out and stick it in your office so that you view it all day long and you remember what your goals and action plans are. Um, now, step three is to take action. So you're going to actually start working through that action plan. Um, and this is where the tips and materials library is going to come into play. Go Knapsack wants you to use this tips and materials library that they've given you to help you reach your goals. So it's broken down into the seven different content areas as well. And there are tips and materials um, on all of the different sections, but you could just click on any topic that you want really or you could search them and they're going to give you a bunch of different resources that you can use so videos on building preschool gardens um, early introduction to sensory gardens they're going to have some learning activities that you can do so farm to preschool toolkits grow it like it try it cantaloupe corner so it's going to talk about cantaloupe um, and then there's some family engagement pieces as well and again, this is for all seven different content areas. So you just use this tips and materials library that they've given you to help you reach your goals. Um, step four is to learn more. So with that, you can utilize curricular concepts. You can utilize uh, Sarah and Mark to learn more. You can utilize this trainings tab. They just want you to educate yourself further um, and, and learn more about your goals so that you can reach them better. So with this trainings tab here on the left, this is um, a section that it's going to provide you trainings on each of the individual sections of the content areas um, and they are worth PDR credit so that's exciting as well. Um, so all you would do is you would go in here, you would um, take the training, you would answer a few questions whenever you're finished and then you would send your certificate over to Miss Amy and we can get you her email address whenever you're uh, ready to go to that point. Um, and then step five is to simply keep it up. So you want to make your changes sustainable. Um, this is where you're going to do those policy changes and do those final steps. And then you're actually going to go in and take a second self-assessment. So you'll click on that green self-assessment tab, and then you would click start new self-assessment. And this is going to show you your progress from point A to point B, all the improvements that you've made. Um, no, that's a lot of information. Uh, one of the key things to remember is that I know with a lot of a lot of the tools within childcare programs, it's a rating system. And although you're getting a score with the Go Knapsack self-assessment tool, the important part is that you're working through the five-step improvement process. And that's what matters. Your grade is not the most important part. It's just that you're making those, those changes in your program and you're making them sustainable. Um, so we just encourage it to be an honest evaluation and, um, and just implement it into your program. Nice. Thanks so much, Ashley and Amy, for kicking us off and doing that great dive into Go Knapsack and the tool. Uh, Mark and I are going to dig a little deeper into Farm to ECE, um, talk about some next steps, and then we'll save some more time for question and answer at the end um, in case they bubble up. Feel free to use the chat box as well if that's a good place for you to put your question. All right, so if you can see my presentation, would you give me a thumbs up? Great. Okay, so I'm Sarah Lane, um, the Farm to School and Early Childhood Education Program Coordinator at the Arkansas Department of agriculture um, and I'm joined by Mark Nelson who's the farm to school innovation lead AmeriCorps VISTA member. Um, we, I have been at the department since August 2019. That's actually when this program first was created here at the department. We were one of the last states to create a state agency coordinator position focused on farm to school. Uh, doesn't mean that there have, hasn't been great efforts on farm to school and farm to early care in the past. Um, but we really have seen a huge benefit with the fact that now we have dedicated time, our team has grown, um, and we're so excited to continue to support Farm to School and Farm to Early Care in the state. So, um, there are other people on our team that help support these efforts. We have Hannah Davis, who's our state school garden manager. Uh, they work part-time and support school garden development through a grant program that we recently announced and awarded, as well as a contest that we offer with 
um, Farm Credit Associations of Arkansas, where we provide funding to school gardens in the state. That can be childcare centers, as well as K-12 schools or alternative learning environments. We also have Karen Reynolds, who is the Arkansas Grown and Arkansas Made Program Manager. So she supports farmers in the development of local farms and helps connect farms to schools, to farmers markets, to grocery stores, or any marketing needs that they might have. And then we have Mark, and so I'll pass it to Mark to introduce himself. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everybody. My name is Mark, and I'm the, uh, the Farm to School Innovation Lead and AmeriCorps VISTA member. I joined the department in July of 2020, and as a VISTA, um, I serve a term of one year, so my, my service term ends in July of this year. And really what I focused on is, is helping in any way possible build the capacity of the department and the farm to school and early care program um, because it was just basically Sarah doing all the heavy lifting at the start. Um, so I came in to help out with anything I could, but also try to spearhead new projects um, and pilot projects to grow the program into different directions where maybe we haven't been able to in the past just because we lacked capacity to do that. And so uh, I've really enjoyed my time so far. It's a little more than half over and I'm hoping to, uh, to get some good stuff done by the, by the end of July when I'm finished. And so now um, we have a little pop quiz for everybody. Not really a quiz, more of a poll. <laughs> um, and so Sarah will launch it and just asking questions about farm to early care, what you know about it, and then if you've done it. Um. Great. So, uh, so good to see responses to the poll. Uh, you know, a range of ideas of what the three pillars of farm to school and farm to early care are. Um, overwhelmingly, everyone said education, nice work. That was one of the pillars. Uh, then on the second question, uh, if you've ever offered farm to school or farm to early care, we have a good range. Um, lots of people saying no, but really interested. So we're so excited you're here with us today, and a few people who have done this. Before. Great. Okay, so thanks everyone for filling that out. Helps give us a good understanding of where we're at and who's on the call today. So let's get to what are the three pillars of Farm to School. Uh, they are school gardens. Give yourself a pat on the back if you clicked that one. Uh, education, which so many of you did, as well as local procurement, which means buying local food. Uh, in the middle here, you can see a picture at Pikeview Early Childhood Center in North Little Rock, where some kids are outside enjoying their school garden, participating in an education class about gardening. Um, sometimes you might hear something called the three C's of farm to school, though, because it can be a little vague as to how does local procurement happen? Like, where, where is that? Or what about the school garden and education? Aren't those the same thing? So I like to say that farm to school can happen in the classroom, and maybe that classroom's indoors, maybe it's outdoors. Um, so that's where you'll see the school garden and education coming together. But it also happens in the cafeteria or the kitchen, or where, in this case, in COVID, wherever you're eating meals um, in your school setting. And it can also happen in the community, because we know that farm to early care cannot happen on its own. You know, it takes dedicated staff administrators, teachers, educators, parents, families, and kids um, to all come together with really the main goal and why we do farm to school and farm to early care efforts is for the kids, right? We wanna see kids grow up happy, healthy, understand where their food comes from, and farm to school is a great avenue for that. And if we dig in a little bit more to farm to early care, we, we, got, we like to characterize um, it all as, as kind of a triple win, a win for kids, a win for local farmers, and a win for communities. So when you talk about children, if you're you know offering fresh fruits and vegetables, you're providing an environment, maybe in a garden outside or, or um, experiential learning, um, you're really helping foster their growth, both physically and mentally, at the most critical time in their life, from zero to five. Um, when we talk about local foods, uh, you know, building relationships with small scale or medium sized farmers who are generally the ones that are able to provide the correct volumes um, to early care facilities in terms of local food. Um, you're building a network there. You're, you know, providing a dedicated customer base maybe over time. And so you're helping them achieve their goals. 
Um, and then with community, you know, your, your definition of community might vary, but really you're just kind of building that network with it and maybe parents, with local businesses, um, with other people who have connections with your, with your facility, you're helping form a network and that also imprints on the children if they have opportunities to be around, you know, adults that help their social and emotional development that's even more positive. So we like to say Farm to ECE sort of emphasizes the experiential learning um, with parent and community engagement. And then that, you know, ideally sets us up for lifelong health and wellness for the children as they grow up. So the plan for today is to start first by talking about assessing where you stand. Um, you know, both Amy and Ashley did a great job of showing the Go Knapsack tool, so we're just going to show one more piece of it. Then we're going to talk um, about the next step being, you know, really building your team is super crucial for farm to early care because you can't do this alone. Um, from my experience in schools and working in gardens is it takes a whole village to make this happen and to be successful over time. And then lastly, um, after you build your team, uh, or find a dedicated friend to come along this journey with you. You're going to set your goals like we talked about and start the work. So um, we talked a little bit before about the, the Go Knapsack assessment tool and both Sarah and I are um, TA providers within Go Knapsack. Um, and it's a very, very useful tool. I, I have to admit it's very user-friendly and the, the fact that it has a farm to ECE self-assessment is even better. Um, and it really, you know, whenever you want to start something new um, or, you know, within something like farm to ECE that might be a little bit broad and seem daunting because it has so many different directions that you can take it, um, doing an assessment is a great way to kind of center yourself and find out what you might want to zero in on, focus on specifically. Um, so the self-assessment within Go Knapsack, we saw a little bit, a little bit about it. And within the farm to ECE side of things, it allows you to evaluate the local foods that you provide or purchase for your facility. If you have a garden, what types of things you do in the garden with, with students. Um, educational materials for the kids, professional development for teachers. And then if, you know, you have a wellness policy or a, a farm to ECE policy that is part of your overall culture in your facility. So then after you go through the self-assessment, um, you make your action plan and um, get started, we recommend building a team. And we recently uh, developed this handout on school garden committees. You know, this can be broadly just a farm to early care committee. Um, it's a three page handout that we have on our website, which we'll direct you to at the end. Um, it's a really great handout to get you started. It helps you think about how to recruit people, who to reach out to, how to engage with your families um, and your in your local community. So a key takeaway is, you know, when you're forming a committee, it's helpful to have more than five people, just thinking of how much turnover they can, there can be at your, your center um, or your school. So a range of people and oftentimes um, maintenance staff or food service staff or cafeteria workers might be overlooked, but they could be really crucial um, individuals on your committee since they, they might have a passion for farm to early care. You might also reach out to county extension agents, or maybe there's a local farmer's market in your community that's really active and there's a great farmer's market manager that you can reach out to. And so once you've assessed uh, where you stand, sort of in farm to early care, uh, once you've built your, your team within your facility, uh, you want to then begin to set goals. And, you know, I think it's, Easiest if you decide on maybe one or two realistic and achievable steps to take, um, whether it's within buying local foods or you know getting more um, books in your classroom that focus on farm education or nutrition and nature education. Um, you know, there's really no such thing as a small 
achievement. Like, I mean, it's any little type of step you could make um, is positive. Um, so, so I like to think about, you know, start by identifying um, one or two things, maybe say, okay, I wanna offer more local fr fresh fruits and vegetables within my, my facility. So start then, uh, identify maybe a snack or meal items that you wanna switch from maybe uh, strawberries that aren't local, you wanna switch that strawberry to be a local strawberry. Um, so then find out, um, well, where are places that I can buy local strawberries, who are people that sell it, and start to you know take step by step in developing in that action plan that, that we had talked about within the Go Knapsack program. Um, how you're going to then achieve these goals. Um, and, you know, we talk about realistic, like obviously strawberries aren't in season year round. So even if it's a step where I want to offer local strawberries three months out of the year, that's a positive step in the right direction because you're building um, relationships within farmers and then you can achieve more steps that way. Um, so some of the things that we've worked on lately, um, we have a school garden grant um, document that we recently um, finished and it has a vast amount of grant resources that you can apply for. Um, it has, you know, shows when the grants are usually available and when they're, when the applications are due. So you can plan that way. Um, and then, we're also working on, you know, developing other resources like um, lists of local farmers, lists of, you know, places where you would be able to access locally grown foods um, to then build your, uh, build towards your goals that way. Great, thanks Mark. So after you've, you know, gotten the funding maybe that you need or you've made your one small step, what do you do next? Um, or maybe you're still trying to figure out which step you want to take. So on these next few slides, uh, Mark and I are going to go into some examples of how local procurement, how education and school gardens happen at early care facilities. So one of the benefits of working with zero to five age students um, is that often try, oftentimes child care centers are open um, throughout the whole year, or maybe they're open in the summer months as well, or offer a little bit more than maybe our K-12 schools do. Because of that also, you normally have a smaller amount of students that you're serving, so it isn't as overwhelming to think that you need to get this large quantity of local food. That means that you can oftentimes purchase in smaller batches from a local farmer, for example, maybe your nearby farmer's market. You could do something called a Community Supported Agriculture or CSA box, which is like a weekly subscription to a local farm. Um, that brings you a box or you pick up the box in a, a central location and it has a bunch of fruits and veggies that they've been growing. Um, those we've seen really great success um, in some of our research that we've done in the southeast area of the United States. Um, you could also buy from a local food grocery store. It's a newer trend that's popping up. There's some in central Arkansas. There's a couple up in northwest Arkansas um, and a few more scattered throughout the state. So that's a great place to check out. Um, or if you're a larger, you know, child care facility or you already receive meals or some sort of food from um, a distributor, you could ask your distributor, you know, what do you have or buy that is Arkansas grown or grown in Arkansas that we might be able to get and serve to our students. In the middle, you can see a picture from Kitty College in Alma. Um, students were trying um, a radish dip as part of a taste test uh, and they were Say that they tried it, liked it. Sometimes you might even see that they loved it, and you kind of have the three uh, categories, and students can vote on how they felt about a product. That's a great way to even just start, even smaller than serving something at a meal, is to do a, a just a taste test. You know, pull it into a lesson that you might be doing, um, and have a food taste with it. The um, University of Arkansas Cooperative Extension, as well as Arkansas Grown, a few years back developed this graph that you see, the far right image. Um, and it is a vegetable harvest calendar, so you can look at it to think what's available when in our state. Uh, it has fruit first, and then you'll see here on the picture, it has vegetables listed. So um, you can kind of look through that, figure out what would be local and available at different times throughout the year, and then um, 
go from there. Reach out to a farmer, find that farmer's market, um, and buy something local. And the next section um, is school garden. This is my favorite. I'm a gardener at heart. <laughs> I love gardening. I like having my hands in the dirt. Um, and so we know that with you know a lot of BCE providers, you know there's a very wide range of capacity and your ability to maybe have a garden, depending on your location, you know what you've got to work with. We know it's not the same for everybody. But that's the great thing about gardening is that it, it is so adaptable. Um, it doesn't fit one thing. I mean, there's no there's no proper garden really. <laughs> I mean, you can tell by some of these pictures that we have, it's it's one of the most adaptable things you could do because you can use recycled things. The the picture there from Helen Tyson Middle School is plastic bottles that they've cut and used as planters hanging on a wall. And so we all have things even lying around our house that can hold soil that we can turn into little planters. Um, and that's a great way to start a garden. Maybe if you have a sunny window or some area that, you know, in your backyard that gets a lot of sun, that could be your, your starting of your garden right there by using simply recycled materials um, and then building from there. And that's also a great way of showing the children, you know, the multiple uses of so many different things. So it's not like, you know, a plastic bottle, you don't necessarily have to throw it once you're done, it can be reused for something else. Um, and then in the middle, um, you know, the gardens are such a great way to experiment. Um, you know, even as a teacher, you might not have any gardening background. Um, so that's, it's also a fun way for you to experiment. You don't necessarily have to get it right and grow a bunch of vegetables to then serve in your your classroom. It can simply be science, doing you know seeing how things grow, observing, learning. Um, you know, gardens are great for uh, sensory um, experiments too, touching, smelling. Um, you know, growing those those aspects of a child's um, learning and development. And then also it, it, you know, having a garden allows for parental or community involvement too. Um, you know, some students might have parents who are avid gardeners or farmers and they, you know, can potentially help out um, with designing a garden or even just, um, you know, helping with a special project. Um, and then, you know, allowing children to take home uh, some of the stuff that they've worked on in the garden, uh, bring those lessons home and, you know, allow the parents to kind of experience what the, the children are learning too can help make positive changes um, within their home environment. And then lastly, we have education. Mark touched on a lot of points of how gardens can connect to education. Um, there's also just, you know, connecting in with the community. So how can you make your farmer school experience experiential for those students? Maybe you want to invite out a local business and bring a tractor and the students can see the tractor, you know, climb on it, learn from the business on what tractors are used for, um, what they do, you know, who rides them and all of that. It can be a very creative, exciting learning opp opportunity for students. Maybe you want to introduce, um, you know, microscopes or um, getting up really close to plants to see what it, that feels like we're sitting further away. And um, how are your five senses, like Mark was talking about, how do those change when you're in different parts of a garden? Maybe, you know, in post-COVID times, uh, you can go out to a local farmer's market, or maybe someone could come in, or you could show a video of a farmer's market so students could see what that's like and how to buy food from a farmer's market versus a grocery store. It can go even beyond this though. Maybe it's just you want to read more books related to gardening and farm to early care. So how can you expand your library to show farmers? Um, how can you, you include this into a lot of units or maybe just have one week or one day focused on farm to early care? Um, we, we in just a second want to highlight different ways that farm to early care align with the standards that uh, you all have to meet because we know that that is 
really what the heart of all this is, is we want to make sure our students are learning well um, and that we're meeting our needs as their teachers. So the next few slides, we're just going to give a few different examples of how farm to early care activities um, align with the the child development and early learning standards um, more just broadly um, and feel free to put in the chat or unmute if you have you know other you know examples of connections that maybe we don't say or something that might dig in a little deeper um, maybe that you've done before so you know where it aligns uh, so the first one um, is within the physical development and health strand uh, of the standards. And it's, it's all you know, the first ones, gross motor skills and fine motor skills. Um, when you talk about children, hand-eye coordination, um, running, walking, tearing things, um, gardening and garden-related activities fit so many of those, those standards. I mean, you, you can see there in the, the Miss Polly Learning Center, and when um, children using uh, appropriate size tools in their gar in their raised bed, um, working on those fine motor skills, um, even if you don't have a garden, um, having children work with seeds or smaller plants and, and vegetables can help refine fine motor skills and allow them to, to manipulate smaller, smaller items. Um, and then, and the other, the Pike View Early Center, um, you know, having children being able to be up and walking around and maybe using bigger tools like a watering can if they can, um, handling plants, it's, it all works in with, with the, the motor skills component of the, the standard. So next we have math. So let's type in the chat any ideas that come to mind when you think about math and these two photos that we see. So the last one is at Kitty College. We have a student holding up a pepper. How might that tie into a math standard or a math activity? And then you can also see the picture at Marshall Elementary. Um, you see there's some pictures of plant parts. You know, there are some hand lenses, students and different plant parts. So how might you high math to a garden or with these pictures. Let's type that in the chat. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, we can definitely be teaching about some math vocabulary. Yeah, so counting, you know, even just numbers. That's great. A lot for are coming in. Thanks, Beth. Counting or measuring size. Nice. Yeah, we could measure a small pepper or a big pepper, right? Or versus a watermelon. Um, Rhonda talking about over time, the growth of a pepper mm -hmm. and what does it look like as a seed and now it's a plant and now we see the fruit and the fruit's growing. Good job. Shannon talking about length and width. Okay, so using maybe rulers or measuring tapes. Monica coming in with spatial reasoning, patterns, food size amounts. Great. We got some more coming in. Teresa talking about size, counting. Again, on the length and width, counting. And we got weight. Nice. Thanks everyone for all those thoughts. So, oh, graphing coming in as well. Thanks Jennifer for that. Well, there's so many ways that math can tie into a garden. I've also even seen just um, painting the side of maybe a raised bed with numbers and the students can look at that garden bed and see, oh, this is one, here's two, here's three. Or maybe there are little stepping stones that the students um, can jump onto like hopscotch, um, but there are numbers on it in the garden. So great, great ideas on how to use math in a garden. Some of the, the best um, examples within maybe garden-based education or even uh, in the, you know, in food, um, sharing a meal together, um, you allow the, the children to interact with each other, um, interact with the teachers, other adults, um, whether it's creative play, maybe art projects, working in the garden, um, you know, exploratory, experiential learning with each other and with adults, it really just ties in and helps grow that, that social and emotional development um, 
you know, whether it's expressing themselves emotionally or just learning how to act with other children. Um, you know, a lot of these farm to early care activities are, are group based or they're done best groups of kids. Um, so it really just teaches those, those skills and, and allows them to develop um, into more social children. And I think you see in uh, Milestones, um, early child care in Conway, they're working on planting in a raised bed. And then Kitty College in Alma, that you can see that they've got the uh, the watering cans working as a team, um, watering the floor, looks like. And then there's some additional strands that we didn't really go into as much, and there are more beyond this. Um, but think about how literacy, you know, books, um, writing can come into farm to early care activities. Um, I love doing what you see on the left picture, nature bracelets. Um, this is an example out at Tate Elementary. So you just take tape, um, wrap it around a child's hand, but backwards, so the sticky part sticking out. And as they go about their day, they can pick up leaves, plants, flowers, seeds, whatever they find that in, is inspiring to them. That's a really fun activity to do. My students really enjoyed that when I worked at a nature preschool. So highly recommend that, that activity even just as an intro into something else that you're doing for the, for the day. You can also um, see at Pikeview Early Childhood, we have another picture where art is being tied into the garden. So think about how students can creatively design garden spaces, how um, you know they can be thinking about food, how that can tie in with art or music in some ways. I've seen some really cool instruments being used from like the seeds inside a gourd. Um, that is dried or okra pods. If you've ever seen dried okra pods, they rattle really well. So farm to early care is not just science, not just math, but it can really span all the standards that you aim to teach to your students. So a few next steps we have. Um, if you are not uh, involved with Go Knapsack yet, uh, you can reach out to myself or Sarah or Amy or Ashley. Um, and we will be able to get you uh, registration and get you up and running with the Go Knapsack program. Um, and if you are in Go Knapsack and you haven't done a, the Farm to ECE self-assessment, um, please do that. And if you're not connected with us, we've been trying to reach out to as many uh, early care providers as we, we've been able to work with to get linked in to Go Knapsack. Um, it, it allows us to kind of have more of a one-on-one, -on -one, um, one-on-one work relationship with early care providers through the Go Knapsack program, um, and to help uh, in any way possible, whether it's goal setting or, or achieving the goals. Um, we also recently, last week, launched a farm to early care survey um, through the department, and um, so that that is a, probably about a 10 minute, 10 to 15 minute survey that really touches on those, those pillars of farm to early care that we talked about earlier. Um, it assesses where you are, it assesses your interest levels, engagement levels, um, sort of the, the challenges that you faced with, um, with implementing farm to early care activities within your facility, and also um, it has a few COVID related questions that help us get an idea of how COVID has affected your facility. Um, and so the point of that survey is for the Department of Agriculture and our partners to then have a better idea of what resources we might be able to develop or share with people um, to best help early care providers either start or improve their farm to early care programs. Um, and so that, if you are, um, if you get our newsletter, it would have been in the newsletter, but we also posted it on our Facebook page. And I'm not sure if we have the link, if we can share the link in the chat. Um, Sarah might grab that. <laughs> we can share the link in the chat. Um, and it'll be open for about the next month. We'll be accepting um, responses hoping to get as many as possible so we have a better idea of, of all the challenges and everything facing farm to early care 
and activities and providers in Arkansas. Um, so kind of the last piece is, um, if you're wondering where to go next, right? Uh, let us know if you want to get signed up with GoNapsack. Help us figure out what resources and trainings you might want in the future by filling out that survey and questionnaire that Mark was talking about. You can also check out the department's website where we have that school garden um, grants handout as well as the committee handout. You can sign up for a bi-weekly newsletter, um, connect with our team if you want to talk to someone else. We also recommend checking on our Facebook. We try to post things there as well. Um, and Hannah, our state school garden manager, has created a map of all school gardens across the state. So if you want to see where school gardens are, there's over 300. Um, so you are joining a large network of people that are really, um, really dedicated to farm to school and farm to early care. And so with that, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, feel free to then add more questions into the chat box or unmute yourself if you want to ask your questions. And uh, we were, we'll finish up in just about a minute or two. Yes. So there's also, if you would like, if you aren't already or not a part of Go Knapsack, if you would like to, there's a $50 incentive for joining and, and doing that farm to ECE um, or really just any section. So if you um, are going to get with Mark and Sarah, once you've done the assessment and worked on some things, you can get... Um, a $50 incentive from us. So it's it's a little something. We're so thankful for your time today. Thanks for joining us on this lunch hour. It was really great to share about Go Knapsack and Farm to Early Care. Um, we look forward to you know supporting all of you in the future and thanks to all that you do. Bye everyone. Thanks everybody.